Hello everyone and welcome back to the Locker Rooms World of Wrestling Podcast. This is Slim. Carl's not here once again, but we all know that um, he'll be back whenever he's back, so we'll just kick the things off straight away with NXT TakeOver In Your House. So the show started with a promo package for the show. Uh, it featured Tom Pettingill and Code Orange also did a live performance. The set has been changed to look like a house and they have a few other things there, but mostly the house was the big part of it. Uh, it looked cool. Uh, the first match of the night is the six woman tag team match between Candice Ray, Dakota Kai and Rabbit uh, Raquel Gonzalez versus me again, Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox. It was a good match. Um, Yim's team won after Yim and Candice brawled to the back. Shotzi took out Gonzalez and Knox hit the shiniest wizard on Dakota Kai for the three count. Like I said, it was a good match. It wasn't anything great or anything. It was just good. Um, yeah. We'll move on and uh, we get Finn Balor versus Damian Priest, which I thought was match of the night. Uh, it was a great match, very back and forth. Balor won by pinfall after hitting the coup de grace on Priest. Uh, match of the night, like I said, a uh, very, very good match. I was sort of hoping that the next match, which is the North American title match, lived up to it and maybe even was better, because it could have be, been, but I'll... Uh, Get into what I thought of that in a minute when I when I get to that match, which is next. So it's the North American Championship match between Keith Lee and Johnny Gargano. Gargano came out with the house set, um, which was cool. He um, locked the locked the door and everything, put the keys in his tights. Uh, it was a pretty good match. Keith Lee won by pinfall after hitting the big bag catastrophe. Uh, match could have been better, had a few botches, and it it wasn't as fast paced as it could have been. No, it was very slow sort of thing. And watching how Gargano wrestles, he's ten, he tends to be fast paced. Keith Lee can be fast paced if he wants to, but his matches with Dominic Dijakovic were faster than what this one was. And yeah, it could have been better. Now, um, I don't think it lived up to the hype. And neither Gagliano or Lee performed at their best, I don't think. But after that, we have the Backlot Brawl match for the NXT Championship between Cole and Dream. Was sort of expecting this to go on last, but it didn't. Um, it was a cinematic match, and Cole showed up in a monster truck with Undisputed Era shit painted all over it. Uh, Dream showed up in Orlando, and he was dressed as Negan from The Walking Dead, and had his own loose seal as well. Uh, lots happened in this match. It was pretty good. Could have been better, but for what it was, it was pretty good. Um, Fish and Strong showed up at one point, and Dexter Loomis, he was under the ring, and he took them both out um, by putting them, putting both of them in the boot of the car and driving off. Uh, in the end, Cole retained by pinfall after hitting the Panama Sunrise on a stack of chairs. Um, I would say go and check it out. It, I don't know... Uh, it's not as good as the Boneyard match. Not as good as the Firefly Funhouse match. Definitely not as good as Stadium Stampede. And probably not as good as what the Champa Gargano was most of the time. But it was still really, really good. Probably the second best match of the night. Uh, so yeah, from, this show was really, really good. Um, I, I do recommend that you check it out if you haven't seen it already. But we'll move on to Tommaso Ciampa versus Karrion Cross with Scarlet. Uh, it was a short match. wasn't quite a squash, but Cross won pretty 
dominantly. Uh, he won by technical submission with the cross jacket. Uh, he was very, very dominant. And uh, Champa passed out. Uh, main event time, and it's the NXT Women's Championship match between Charlotte, Rhea, and Eo. A uh, really good match. For a Charlotte match, it was great. Um, yeah. It, I'm not sure if I prefer this match over the cold drain match or what like that. They're very, very similar in my eyes in that. They were both really, really good. Um, lots happened again in this match, like the cold, cold, uh, cold dream match. But the biggest spot was when EO did a crossbody from the top of the set on the both Charlotte and Maria. EO ended up winning by pinfall when she hit the SAE moonsault on Rhea, which was botched because she sort of landed on her face, not her chest. Um, but she got the three count from it, and Charlotte had the figure eight locked in, which prevented her from breaking up the pin, sort of. Because I do think that they should not count the pin if a submission's already on, but. Unlike uh, but for the show, I did lose the predictions. Um, Cole got them. Well, Cole won outright with four out of six. Um, so congratulations to him. That's the second event Morales won because he also won AEW. However, neither time the belt was a line because somebody that doesn't do the predictions for either of them shows has the belt at the moment and um it is being defended at backlash as well so check out the backlash predictions video because uh we've got some special guests in there um but yeah we'll move on to raw and this week's raw starts with commentary running down the card before Asuka comes out for a match with charlotte uh, Charlotte is about to be introduced when Bailey and Banks come out instead. Bailey and Banks talk about becoming tag champs. Asuka talks in Japanese and tells them that this is her ring. Uh, Banks is about to tell Asuka to get to get out of the ring um, before Charlotte comes out. Charlotte tells them to make the celebration quick so she can have a match. The Iconics then come out and say that they only... Oh, that the only match people want to see is the women's tag team match at Backlash. Uh, Asuka speaks Japanese again. Bailey says a couple of weeks ago Charlotte tried to break their friendship. Um, and Sasha's. And then uh, look what happened. They won the tag belts. Uh, Charlotte says it doesn't matter because they're still garbage. A brawl then breaks out and Charlotte and Asuka stand to the ring. We then get Bailey and Sasha versus the Iconics versus Asuka and Charlotte. A uh, good match. Asuka and Charlotte couldn't work together, but still won after Charlotte went to the moonsault. But Asuka tagged herself in and locked in the Asuka lock on Billy Kay and got the tap out. Post match, Charlotte attacked Asuka and held the belt up and said that Asuka has never beaten her. Which I, I reckon that. Shayna's meant to be going after Asuka next. But maybe they're changing it to Charlotte. And if they do change it to Charlotte, hopefully Asuka beats her. And then Asuka could lose the belt to Baszler at SummerSlam. Because she's got no backlash, so then Charlotte at Extreme Rules and Baszler at Summerslam and she could lose it to Baszler. Baszler can hold it until Rousey decides to come back and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Until Becky comes back or whatever. Um, but moving on, uh, we have a look at Ray's retirement ceremony and what happened in the match between Black and Rollins last week. Rollins is then out to join commentary and he even kicks Saxon off 
commentary and takes his seat and heads it for the interview with Ray. And before the break, he says hi. And Ray calls him a son of a bitch. We come back from break and we get the interview. Ray says that his eye is healing and he doesn't know when he'll be back. Um, he says that he has a 619 with the Messiah's name on it and he's going to kick his ass. Rollins says that Ray could have walked away a legend, but he keeps spreading misinformation. Rollins then invites Ray and Dominic to come to Raw next week. And Black just dives in from out of nowhere and attacks Rollins. Back from break and we get Alistair Black and Humberto Carrillo versus Murphy and Austin Deary. Pretty good match. Black and Carrillo won the pinfall after Black hits a big kick on Murphy. Won the Black Mass, just a big old kick. Post-match, Rollins comes out to raise music and with a mask on. Theory and Murphy attack Black and Carrillo. Theory hits the ACL on Carrillo. Murphy hits a Murphy's Law on Black before Rollins hits the stomp on Black. We then have a backstage interview with Orton, who asks if Edge is the only guest on the peep show. Charlie says yes. Then he says that they might actually have two guests instead. Then we get the peep show with Edge. Um, Christian says he thinks he's running on fumes. He doesn't think Edge can pull off the greatest match of all time. He couldn't even do it in his prime, so there's no way he's doing it now. Edge asks if Christian knows what he's going through. Uh, he says that this isn't the same Edge that would give him confidence before every one of their tag matches. Christian says he is hearing excuses. Christian says that Edge's mum will, metaphorically, be at ringside for backlash. And he asks Adam if Edge isn't going to be giving it all, then he should go, on, go home. Uh, yeah, that's a very, very um, important one because he calls Edge Adam instead of Edge. Uh, Christian says that he, uh, Christian says that we think he's the greatest he's ever been, um, then Orton interrupts on the Tron. He says that Edge made one guarantee and that was he was going to try, and that's pathetic. He says that he is going to embarrass Edge and take all of Edge's grit and passion, and at Backlash, the redemption. Redemption of Edge will be over so he can go home to his wife and daughters. Edge responds by saying, no it's not, and leaves. Then we have a look at how Raw went off air last week. Then a backstage interview with MVP, and he says that if we want an in-depth look at the full Nelson, then we need to watch the VIP lounge. Truth then interrupts, and Lashley puts the full Nelson in on him. We then have a look at what has happened so far in the Anything You Can Do, We Can Do Better rivalry before we get the decathlon. Uh, Tez beats Ivar in the 1600 metre dash. Eric beats Dawkins in archery and some dude gets shot by Dawkins in the foot. Uh, Profits win uh, the flip cut competition thing. But they just flipped the cut. Uh, Ivar breaks the table. Tez forfeit sword fighting against Ivar. Dawkins beats Eric in hurdles because Eric just ran straight through them all and thought that he had won and then they sort of had to get made in. That's not how you do it. Um, Eric beats Dawkins in stick fighting, which I guess is pretty much sword fighting, but with sticks. Uh, Prophets beat Raiders in a dance-off. One of the judges dances with Ivar, and we get the Ivar is cute, Eric isn't. Um, Prophets beat Raiders in shot put. Raiders beat Prophets in turkey leg eating. Ivar beats Tez in pole vaulting, so that they tie. Cruz is out with new music next. Uh, we have a look at what happened last week with Cruz, Owens, Andrade, and Angel Garza. 
Cruz says that at Backlash he will defend his US title against the winner of the next match, which is a number one contenders match for the US title between Angel Garza, Andrade and Kevin Owens. Garza and Andrade come out together with Vega and Owens attacks both of them. Uh, it was a really good match. Andrade won after Owens hits a stunner on Garza and Andrade got rid of Owens and pinned Garza. We then have a look at what happened earlier in the Triple Threat Tag Match before getting a backstage interview with Charlotte who talks about not tapping or being pinned to lose a title at TakeOver. Asuka then interrupts. Charlotte asks if she ever takes anything serious. Asuka slaps her and says, yes, I do. Then Andrade and Angel Garza are arguing backstage when Vega shows up, points, and they walk away. Angle then weighs in on the Edge Orton match at Backlash and says Edge will win. Viking Raiders then ask Drew if he wants to be a Viking. Drew says he wants the Raiders to beat MVP and Lashley. And after the show, he is going to have a get-together. He also tells the Raiders to check, it, check out the VIP lounge because you never know what could happen. Now we then have the VIP lounge next and as MVP is introducing Lashley, McIntyre comes out. Drew says that he's starting to think that uh, him and MVP aren't friends. But after the introduction, he guesses that they are because everything that MVP said about Lashley could also be applied to McIntyre. And McIntyre came out. Uh, MVP says that he wasn't talking about Drew, but he was instead talking about Lashley. MVP says that his business plan for Lashley will conclude with Lashley winning the belt at Backlash. Drew then says that he's going to claim on MVP, and as he's about to say one when he's doing the countdown, Lashley shows up, tells Drew that the only way he'll Nothing. Lashley shows up. Drew tells Lashley that the only way he'll win the belt is by prying it from his cold dead hands before hitting the Glasgow kiss on MVP. And then the Raiders come down and so do the Prophets. We then get the Viking Raiders versus MVP and Lashley with the Prophets and Drew McIntyre at ringside. During the match we get an interview with Lana who says that it bothers her that she's been asked not to go out for Lashley's matches, but she has realised that she's been selfish to herself by not focusing on her own career, and she's going to make 2020 her year. And on commentary, I'm pretty sure it was Phillips, said, the way that 2020 is going, you can have it, which was very funny. Um, but the match was good. Lashley and MVP won by submission after Lashley locked in the full Nelson and Eric. Post-match, Ivar hits MVP and Lashley locks in the full Nelson on Ivar. Uh, Profits try to break it and McIntyre succeeds after hitting Claymore. Uh, main event time and it's Asuka vs Charlotte. Bailey and Sasha join commentary. During the match, the Iconics are shown to be in the crowd, and Iconics attack Bailey and Bates later on in the match, and they hit the Fall from Grace, which is what they're calling their reverse magic killer finisher. Uh, they hit that on Bailey on top of the announce table. Uh, towards the end of the match, Nia comes down and Asuka attacks her, turns her into a big boot from Charlotte, who gets the pin off that. Post match, Nia hits a small drop on Asuka before leaving. And that was Raw. Uh, it was okay. They announced one match for Backlash, which was the US title match. Uh, and I'm recording this on Sunday, the day before Backlash, and that's the last match that was announced. But, yeah, whatever. I'd imagine that on the bump, which takes place at about midnight here, um, they were running outside a bunch of other ones. But we'll move on to AEW Dark, and this week's Dark has eight matches. 
The first match is Lowrider and Diego Del Sol versus SCU. Uh, Frankie Kazarian and Scott Vesco. Uh, one of the squash match, but instead it was a decent match. SCU wasn't going to lose though. Uh, SCU won by pinfall after hitting the SCU later on Del Sol and Scorpio Sky got the pin. Uh, backstage, we get an in induction for Alan Angels into the Dark Order. He is now known as Five. Next is Lee Johnson versus Five with Ten. Alex Reynolds and John Silver. And I've been trying to find out the correct numbers here, but from what I can tell, Alex Reynolds is four and John Silver is three. So you've got Eva Luno, which is one, Stu Grayson, which is two, John Silver, which is three, Alex Reynolds, which is four, uh, Alan Angels, which is five, and Preston Lance, who is ten. I believe. During the match, Brody Lee comes out and five hits his finisher, which is where he stands behind his opponent, holding their arms backwards and jumps, puts both feet in the back and he hits the ground, which is also Zaya Brookside's finisher. Um, I don't remember what she calls it though. Uh, it was a good match. Post-match, all of the Dark Order members get in the ring, with the exception of Brody Lee and they attack Lee Johnson. We then get Musa and Brady Pierce versus Proud and Powerful. A uh, decent match, Proud and Powerful won by pinfall after hitting the street sweeper on Musa. Uh, QT Marshall's then backstage and he talks to Brady and Dustin and says their match is an tag match and Dustin gets annoyed because he just got painted up. QT also says Ellie made new natural nightmare shirts and um, Dustin and Brandy don't like that. After that we get Pineapple Pete and Anthony Katina versus The Butcher and the Blade. A uh, decent match, Butcher and Blade win by pinfall after hitting full death on Katina. Uh, then we get Zach Clayton versus QT Marshall with Dustin, Brandy and Ellie. Ellie's on commentary. During the match Ellie leaves commentary to go to ringside. Also during the match, Brandy gets hurt and Ellie breaks a nail. And instead of checking on Brandy, QT checks on Ellie. Ellie also grabs Clayton's foot as he's on the middle rope, which allows QT to win by pinfall after hitting QT cutter from the middle rope. And it was a good match. It's then Sunny Kiss versus Christopher Daniels. Uh, CD is much more aggressive than normal in this match. Pretty good match. CD won by pinfall after hitting the Angels' wings. Then we have Peter Avalon and Brandon Cutler with Lever Bates first Jurassic Express, and it's Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt with Jungle Boy. A very good, funny, entertaining match. Jurassic Express win by pinfall after they hit a double choke slam, and Luchasaurus hits a standing moonsault on Avalon. Marco sits on Luchasaurus's back for the pin. Main event time, and it's John Moxley versus Robert Anthony. Brian Cage stands at commentary for the match. Uh, good match. Moxley won by submission after a very com competitive match, and he won with a Texas Clover. We'll move on to AEW Dynamite. The show starts with a package showing the highlights from last week. Commentary then runs down the card, and Chris Jericho and Floyd come out to do commentary. First match of the night is Butcher and Blade versus FTR. We see Tully, Arm, and Jack Snake Roberts all in the crowd, which was pretty cool. Um, it was a really good match. FTR won by pinfall after hitting the Mindbreaker, which is their assisted pole driver they did last week. Post-match, we get an in-ring promo with FTR, who start talking about how they're the best. When the Young Bucks come out and say that they're the best, um, 
when Butcher and Blade attack. Well, they, they say that in Butcher and Blade attack. Uh, Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc attack. Then Kenny Omega and Hangman Page come out. And Havoc, Sabian, Butcher and Blade all get out of the room. We come to a backstage interview after that with the Natural Nightmares. Dustin asks for QT to have his head in the game for their tag title match next week. He also says that Ali won't be ringside with them. Next we get Penelope Ford and Nyla Rose versus Kip Sabian. No. Penelope Ford and Nyla Rose with Kip Sabian versus Hikaru Shida and Chris Statlander. Match starts when Rose and Ford go on the attack. Like the bell hadn't rang, so as soon as they attacked, the bell rang. Uh, pretty good match. Ford and Rose won by pinfall after Rose tossed Ford the title and she hit Sheeta with it before the fisherman suplex for the three count. We get a video package with Darby Allen. He says he's not cleared to wrestle. Tony Hawk says he's cleared to skate. We then see Darby trying to land after coming off a ladder. We then get a video package with Britt Baker where she says she needs respect to be a good role model. After that we get Inner Circle, which is Proud and Powerful and Jake Hager versus the best friends of Orange Cassidy. Again the match starts when Inner Circle attacks before the bell. Uh, good match, best friends of Orange Cassidy win by pinfall after Orange locks in a crucifix of sorts on all the tees. Post-match, in a circle attack, and Chris Jericho comes down with Floyd and levels best friends and busts open Orange before attacking him with 20 pounds of blood oranges. Chris Jericho also says that Cassidy has been juiced. Then we get a promo for Fighter Fest. Tony then goes to interview the Gun Club until MJF takes over and says he wants a shot at the TNT title. Billy then has a go at MJF and Billy and Wardlow have a stare down. We then look at how the Dark Order is trying to recruit Colt Cabana. Then we have Colt Cabana versus Sammy Guevara. Good match. Guevara wins by pinfall after hitting the GTH for a three. Post match, the Dark Order, including Uno and Grayson, come out and Brody Lee helps Colt to his feet before they all leave. Colt follows them. Sammy then says he's the best, and Matt Hardy interrupts and says that he sees a young Matt Hardy and um, he respects Sammy Devon. Matt says Sammy needs to get away from Chris Jericho. Matt keeps changing until he becomes broken again and says he will eat Sammy. Joey Janela then has a video package where he says that he's faded into the darkness over the past six months before Sonny Kiss shows up and picks him up. Dasher then tries to talk to Colt who knocks on Mr. Brody Lee's locker room door before walking in. Commentary then runs down next week's card. Alex Marvez then talks to Moxley, who says he's in a real bad mood because Taz keeps talking shit. He also says he's going to win at Fighter Fest. Taz shows up and says Brian Cage will win at Fighter Fest, and Cage attacks Mox. The two then brawl until Taz calls off Cage. Cage decides to throw him under the boot of the car that also breaks the back window. We then get a video package where Cody talks about defending his belt each week and also talks about his challenger this week, Mark Quinn. Main event time, and it's Mark Quinn versus Cody with Arn Anderson for the TNT Championship. Isaiah Cassidy and Matt Hardy come out during Quinn's entrance. A really good match. Cody won by submission after locking in an ankle lock on Quinn using Cody's feet. Which was weird because Cody locked in an ankle lock on Quinn but used his own feet to lock it in instead of his arms. But out oh, well, got job done. Um, post match, Hager comes out and attacks Arn and Cody. Private Party and Matt Hardy come out with chairs to help Cody. 
the rest of the inner circle except Chris Jericho and Lloyd come out and they brawl until inner circle retreats to the top of the stage. Cody then challenges Hager to a match at Fighter Fest with the belt in the line. We'll move on to NXT now. And the show starts off with a recap of what happened at TakeOver. Era, without um, Kyle O'Reilly, then come out and Cole says his reign is going to continue. And the problem with Dream is that he isn't Adam Cole, baby. He says no one will be able to beat him for the belt. They then talk about Dexter Loomis, they call him a freak and multiple other things. Roddy says that he can see him everywhere. Cole finishes up by saying he will beat Dexter Loomis later. As Era leaves, Roddy actually sees him in the crowd and runs away. Backstage, Era calming Roddy down when Keith Lee and Mia Yim show up and Lee says he's been wondering what's next for him and he has found it. We then get Mia Yim and Keith Lee versus Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano. Pretty good match. Lots of men versus women action. Uh, match ends with the Garganos winning by pinfall by, uh, with a roll up by Gargano and Lee. However, before that, he hit one final beat on Keith Lee, who landed on top of Candice. Then, as he was helping, as Keith Lee was helping Candice, Johnny rolled him up, which caused Keith Lee to throw her out of the ring, which was very funny. We then have a look at the Priest Bella match from TakeOver. Then we get a backstage interview from TakeOver with Priest, who says the match was meant to make his name live forever, and now it will. Then we get a backstage interview with Cameron Grimes, who says he's beat Bella already, and he'll do it again, because he's not a loser like Priest. Priest shows up, punches Scrubs in the face. We then get a package for EO winning the belt and she says she will take the belt to new heights because of her division. Ah, uh, because it's her division. We then get in the share with Malcolm Bivens versus Mikey Del Green and Mike Reed. A squash match for in the share share in the share won my pinfall after hitting the sit out side slam elbow drop combo. Then we get an upgrade update on Grimes who thinks he has a broken jaw and the ref is talking to Regal who wants to talk to Grimes. We come back from break and we see that Grimes is talking to two girls when the ref shows up with Regal and Grimes tells him to go away before putting on the act of broken jaw when the ref says he has Regal on the video call who says Grimes will still compete. Grimes tells everyone to leave him alone. Then we get a video package for Brizango, who talk about their careers and say that they'll win the tag belts back. They're not back. They'll just win the tag belts next week. Then we have a look at the cross Champa match from TakeOver, and we get an exclusive interview with Champa after TakeOver, who says nothing before getting in his car and driving away. We then get a backstage interview with Rhea, who says good on EO for spotting an opportunity and taking it. Robert Stone shows up, tries to recruit Rhea, who turns him down, then beats him up. We then get Cameron Grimes versus Finn Balor. Very good match. Balor won by pinfall after hitting the reverse 6 1, not 6 1, 9, 19 16. Coup de Gras, and then finally the 19 16 for the pin. Balor then says he's going after the North American title. After that, we get Casey Catanzaro. The Dakota Kai with Ra Raquel Gonzalez. Uh, good match. Kai wins by a pinfall after hitting the GTK. Post match, Kai says she's coming after the women's title. Then she and Gonzalez attack Casey before Katie Carter tries to help. But Raquel takes her out with the side power bomb thing that she does. We then get a promo where Timothy Thatcher starts tra uh, says training starts next week. Whatever that there. El Hio Del Fantasma is out next for a promo. He starts speaking Spanish before Maverick comes out and congratulates him and thanks him. Maverick says Fantasma's journey should have been talked about since he debuted in the tournament and then won it. 
Maverick then challenges Phantasma and Phantasma accepts before the kidnappers show up. Phantasma and the kidnappers appear to join forces, attack Maverick and the kidnappers are revealed to be Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Miles. Phantasma then takes off his mask and announces that he is Santos Escobar. Roddy then finds a picture that, le that Loomis left behind and Ira says they will take care of Loomis. After Fish and Cole leave, Roddy sees Loomis looking through the window in a door that looks into that room. Um, Tom Tree then runs down next week's car and it's main event time which is Dexter Loomis versus Adam Cole with Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong. Pretty good match. Cole wins by a pinfall after Fish distracted the ref so Roddy could help Cole get out of the very hard to say this. Katagantami. I think I said it right. Allowing Cole to hit the last shot to the pin. Post match, Cole taunts Loomis, who locks in the Katagantami again. The rest of the era attack him. Dream comes out. Loomis and Dream run the rest of the era off. And Scarlet shows up with an hourglass while Cole stands tall in the ring. Signaling that Karrion Cross is coming for the title. We'll move on to NXT UK now. And this week's NXT UK has NXT UK superstars picking their favourite matches of all time. During the show, Noam Dar has some promos. Uh, he says that he wants competition. Doesn't have to be in ring competition, it can be Connect 4 or anything that you can think of, be creative. He also says that the rest of the roster isn't as committed as he is. He also says he wants to be deemed an, an essential service. Uh, pretty funny promo, so though. Alfie Valkyrie also has a promo where she says she wants the NXT UK Women's Championship. Not sure if I said that right but I, that's how I pronounce her name. Uh, we'll move on to Smackdown and we'll keep the show off with a recap of what has happened between Sheamus and Jeff Hardy over the past couple of weeks. Then we get the contract signing between Jeff and Sheamus. Sheamus comes out with a doctor, security and a big box. Sheamus says that he won't sign the contract until he until Jeff does a piss test. If he tests positive, then the match is off. Jeff does it. Sheamus does a PSA. Jeff throws the piss in Sheamus's face. And the crowd chants, you got pissed on. We come back from break and Sheamus is washing his face and cleaning his mouth. And the doc comes in and says the test came back in negative. New Day come out for a match against Cesaro and Nakamura. A decent match. Cesaro and Nakamura won by pinfall after Kofi went for a splash. And Nakamura got his knee up. Uh, off of that, he pins Kofi for three. Backstage, Tucker is getting Otis prepared for their match later with Strowman against Miz Morrison and Ziggler. Mandy shows up to wish them good luck, and Tucker says that if the opportunity is there for him to cash in, then he needs to take it. Jeff and Sheamus then come through brawling. We then get a promo for the Intercontinental title match between Styles and Brian before we get the finals of the Intercontinental title tournament match. Uh, great match, probably match of the week. Um, yeah, I'd say match of the week because technically TakeOver was last week. Was it? No, I wonder what I'm on. Oh, so maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was better than Bauer, please. Yeah, so it was match of the week, I reckon. Styles won by pinfall after hitting the Styles Clash and then the Phenomenal Forearm for the three. Post match, we get an interview with Styles who says he's the best and he's phenomenal. We then look at what Miz and Morrison did last week before we get a backstage promo from Braun who says he will destroy Miz and Morrison at Backlash and if Otis tries to cash in. Although he likes Otis, he will obliterate some heavy machinery. Then we get a celebration for Bailey and Sasha after winning the women's tag titles last week. They say they won't lose the belts 
Then Bosom Cross interrupt and the iconic sharp on the Tron and they say that they have beaten Bosom Cross recently and they ended Bailey and Sasha's reign last year at Mania. Then Bosom Cross attacked Bailey and Banks. Then we have a backstage interview with the Miz and Morrison who attempt to show their new music video but it's cut off from Rawls entrance which leads us straight into the main event and it's Strowman and the Heavy Machinery versus Miz, Morrison and Ziggler. During the match, Corbin appears on the Tron and he talks to Mandy and says she's fantasizing about being with him. Otis runs backstage and attacks Corbin. A good match, Strowman and Heavy Machinery won by pinfall after Strowman won the train on everyone, sends Ziggler in, who was the legal man, into the ring to get caterpillared by Otis and he picks up the three count. We'll move on to 205 Live and we start 205 Live this week with Everrise versus Leon Ruff and Adrian Alanis. Decent match, Everrise wins by pinfall after hitting a assisted lung blower on Alanis. We then have a look at what's happened over the past couple of weeks between Swerve and Swerve, Nice and Gallagher and the Britain Brothers and Tahuti Mask. We also get a recap of what happened on NXT between Drake Maverick and Phantasma slash Escobar. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to keep calling him Centris Escobar or El Hio Del Phantasma, that's why I say slash. Um, but main event time and it's Isaiah Swerve Scott and the Britain Brothers versus Gallagher, Nice and Tony Miles. Good match. Towards the end, Nice and Gallagher left Miles because he kept saying he had it. Britain Brawlers and Swerve won by pinball after Swerve hit the confidence boost on Tony Miles for a three count. So that was this week in wrestling. Um, be sure to check out the backlash predictions. I might even try to link them into this video um yeah and next week we will start off the uh podcast with backlash i don't think i will be back next week he might be but i don't think he will be if he is then you will obviously see him here if he isn't then we'll just be there again like normal but he will be back hopefully soon not sure when um, I have been talking to him, making like seeing if he knows when he might be back, but if he doesn't, he's just too busy at the moment. So he'll be back when he's back, but yeah. From me, I have to say thank you and goodbye. Good night.